Hi, this is Anita, the Global Trade Gal. Today I want to talk a little bit about the new kind of procurement, which is known as cognitive procurement. This is the new way or the way that people see the future of the supply chain going. I have to be honest, before I wrote a blog on this, a blog entitled, What is Cognitive Procurement? Six Ways It is a Different Procurement. I'll put a link below in the description so that you could read it if you are interested. I really didn't know much about cognitive procurement. But as I was studying about it and reading about it, I thought, wow, you know, all of this does make sense that this huge change is going to take place in the supply chain. Cognitive procurement is about using technology in the supply chain process. You know, it's going to be using all these different types of technology to help this supply chain process. So here are some different ways that cognitive procurement could actually be a disruptive technology that could be redefining how we view the supply chain and the entire procurement process. Of course, as we bring more computers in, it could also mean that less people may be needed in the supply chain, but it also will mean that accuracy will go up. So that's what's really kind of exciting about this is the fact that you know, your accuracy could go up and the, 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 all of this cognitive procurement could really help with the entire supply chain. The first thing is about the cognitive procurement is that, first of all, it could be using artificial intelligence. In very simple terms, this could mean that artificial intelligence could be used instead of human intelligence to make decisions. You know, everything from, you know, what do you need to buy, which is happening now with a lot of the technology being used to how you need to buy it. And the reason is, is because the the cognitive procurement will be able to take this huge amount of data and in a very short period of time to be able to analyze it and to be able to find out things about it, which will be much more on target than if a human had done it. You know, in data-heavy industries such as procurement, the self-learning technology of artificial intelligence can handle advanced tasks, including analyzing massive amounts of information over real time to make a decision. So they can um, replace some time-consuming, repetitive tasks, such as invoice matching, data entry, and payment approvals. Artificial intelligence will be able to do this with the accuracy and speed that no human can ever match. In other words, with cognitive procurement, a machine will be able to outperform our own human intelligence at a speed and accuracy that we can't not imagine or even dream of. The other thing would be of cognitive procurement would be the use of deep learning. Part of artificial intelligence is also known as deep learning. And this simply means that the AI function that imitates the workings of the human brain, it's how AI can process data and create patterns to make a decision. Deep learning is actually considered a part of artificial intelligence. The system will be capable of learning from the data in an unsupervised way. This would be something like you have an employee and your employee is going to work 24 hours, seven days a week, and they're going to be able to take all the stuff all the data, and they're going to be able to process it, and then they're going to be able to tell you in a very accurate way what decisions should be made. That is exactly the way the computer will be with this. The key in all of this is the machine will be able to learn without human supervision. You know, so, you know, you'll just be able to let the machine sort of run itself, print out a report, and there will be the information that you need. That's because in artificial intelligence or also in cognitive procurement, the machine will use what's known as data mining and data mining is the ability to turn raw data into useful information. This is also another core function of cognitive procurement and artificial intelligence. With cognitive procurement, the machine will have the ability to mine huge amounts of data and quickly find the most accurate and useful information or the most inform- most useful information needed. And as artificial intelligence becomes better and better, the machine will eventually be even to tell you what you need before you even know that you need it. In a way, you know, that's really kind of scary, but it's also really exciting that, you know, uh, um, the computer could be so accurate. And part of the reason I'll be able to do this, I'll be able to look at what's known as pattern recognition. There'll be an automatic recognition of patterns and irregularities in the data. 
The machine will be able to help you to see the patterns, to see irregularities, or even target irregularities in your procurement process. Your know, pattern recognition is one of the major advantages of cognitive procurement, that it will help to find any problems in the procurement supply chain. Another function about it would be what they call the um, IOT, which is the Internet of Things powered by big data. Internet of Things, known as the IOT, is the ability to process a large amount of data on a real-time basis and store that data using various storage technologies. A large amount of unstructured data can be generated by the Internet of Things devices, and this is then collected together in the big data system. If this all sounds a little bit like mumble-jumble, you know, essentially it means that the big data and the Internet of Things will work together within a vast network of, they'll be like sensors and they'll collect a load of information and then they'll basically be able to tell you that information or handle that information on their own. So it would be like, again, like having an, an employee, except this will all be artificial intelligence. You won't need to have an employee with it because the artificial intelligence will be working with it. And you start, you know, adding on to that maybe things as robotics where the robots are moving and the robots are moving the things. And, you know, you would then have 100% accuracy because the robots will all be there moving it and you will be completely on the machine and all of this data will be there that someone just sits up in a control room and watches all of this taking place. You know, it's terrifying and exciting at the same time that this is a possibility. The other part which is very interesting about all of this is the use of blockchain technology. You know, blockchain technology makes it difficult or almost impossible to be able to change hack or cheat any kind of system. And this is probably one of the most exciting parts because right now one of the worries that everyone has is, is everything's on a system and we don't have humans. How are we going to know that it's going to be accurate? How are we going to know that there's going to not be a problem? What are what if hackers come in and they hack the system? What's going to happen? But under the blockchain, the data is in blocks. So all the blocks would need to be hacked for the system, which is extremely difficult. This is one reason why you have like the Bitcoin, the other coins with all this blockchain technology. And it's because of the way the system's set up in blocks, it's al it's almost entirely unhackable, at least now, who knows? You know, that could change. Somebody could find a way to be able to hack the entire system. So, you know, cognitive procurement will use the blockchain, block. Cognitive procurement will use blockchain technology at its very core. That this means it'll be do the data. This means that the data will be. This means that the data will be divided into blocks. So it'll be difficult to hack, cheat, or change the system. You know, today there's still some issues with the blockchain system, but it's believed that uh, this will improve and that it will become a possibility and that cognitive procurement will be using blockchain technology as it becomes more refined. And as that process becomes better, that this is something that companies will be using. One reason why the blockchain is so important in the supply chain is that blockchain in the supply chain can help foster better traceability, transparency, and credibility. This, of course, has an uh, impact on procurement. In other words, in Cognitive procurement, whoever is in charge of the supply chain or procurement can know 100% that the data and the information they're getting is correct, that they don't need to depend upon human intelligence. Instead, they'll be depending upon artificial intelligence, the mining of the data and of uh, technologies of the blockchain, where it'll be impossible to be able to hack the systems. You know, we find that this is really quite exciting, and I think it's so everyone in the supply chain needs to understand this because this is something which probably we're going to see much sooner instead of later. That we're going to start seeing companies start using some of these technologies in some probably frightfully exciting and also maybe in some ways terrifying ways because at the end of the day, people are going to lose their jobs because they're going to be replaced by machines. So, I guess with everything, there's good and there's bad, but at the end of the day, this really is what is known as progress or moving forward. And it's kind of, it's something that we can't change or stop and it's going to happen. 
So we'll either get on the train or get off the train, I guess you could put it and say that. Thank you so much for listening. And again, if you want to read our blog, we have a blog entitled What is Cognitive Procurement? Six Ways Different Procurement. We'll put the link below. Go to our website, mandoro.com. You can find lots of great information. And also, if you have any questions about creating, designing, manufacturing home decor products in Asia, we'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for listening. We truly do appreciate your time. This podcast is sponsored by Mindoro. We create, develop, and manufacture home decor and home furnishing products in Asia with a social conscience. We'd love to have you check out our blog at mindoro.com and sign up for our newsletter. We'll put a link below in our description so you can easily go there. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please give us a thumbs up and leave us a review. This really helps. Thank you again for listening.